Jeez. All right, Larry back here with you on the uh, Romulan Bird of Prey build. Uh, AEW Studios was the one that created this, so uh, let's pick up kind of where we left off last time. Um, uh, the nacelles. <coughs> what I had done was I'd taken the uh, my circle template. I made two rings. One ring I was for the back here. Um, left the open for the uh, for the light uh, and I put another ring on the front here that allowed the dome to mount flush to this if you remember this thing kinda looked like a sausage because of the uh, vacuum form right the the back none of the edges were crisp so <clears throat> by putting the ring here uh, I glued the, the ring to the existing nacelle and then I filled the gap It's probably about a sixteenth three sixteenths gap um, uh, between the, the vacuum form part and the ring. So once I filled out with plastic, I didn't fill it with the filler yet, I filled it with the plastic uh, just so I got a good bond and then I went in and with the uh, Evercoat and filled in the minor gaps, filled in the seams, filled in the other divots uh, and as you can see I have a crisp edge here same thing on the front part of the nacelle. I got the taper, the chamfer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, before it was just a rounded mess. Um, I also got my lights in there. I got the green flickering in the front, uh, red flickering in the back. And I went ahead and I built whatever you want to call them, the fins, whatever, something that's going to go behind the dome. And I did that just to give me some detail behind the dome. Of course, the dome would be frosted and probably tinted in a uh, some sort of a green. This I'll probably paint uh, in a uh, in a very dark green. And you know, I mean, I'd like to fill it with some kind of a fiber just to kind of give it that uh, I don't know that that look of you know some kind of plasma going on in there. But let me get back into focus. Center here, as you can see. It's tapered. It looks tapered. It doesn't look like a fat sausage anymore. So I got both of them done. Um, I'm just going through and cleaning up uh, some divots in the uh, in the surface here. This is again. This is the Evercoat. So uh, just doing some fine fine touch-ups with the bodywork on that. And as you can see, I got the wings on. Uh, I have pictures as I've been going along here. I'm just—I'm not going to run this, uh, run the video camera the whole time while I'm working. It's just uh, number one, my bench isn't big enough, and number two, this the sanding of the Evercoat is uh, <coughs> is very dusty, so I'm not going to expose the camera to that. Uh, so in the pictures, you'll see that I had to build up. The area where the wing met the body and what it did was it uh, took the wing because it's almost flat I mean it was it had a slight tilt to it an angle to it but it uh, I gave it more of an angle so like I said I had to build up this area under here and glue the wing on once I got the wing glued on I drilled drilled two holes through the bottom and came up with some screws. Now the screws and I'll, I'll whack off. Um, 
but that gave it some extreme rigidity. So I'm not I'm not worried that this thing's gonna fall apart. Uh, I'll whack the screws off, like I said. Uh, I put my hole in for my rod, and uh, basically it'll be mounted like uh, like I did my Enterprise. Uh, I and we'll talk about the base here in a minute. Mr. Uh, Jerry Hancock over there at uh, Hedgecock over at the uh, uh, HDA Model Works is working on the uh, the decal for the base, and let me tell you, it looks wicked. The guy does some awesome work. Um, I got the portholes drilled out, or the sensor. You know, some of these are sensor, uh, uh, sensor. Some of them are ports. Most of the, the square ones were the ports. The round ones were sensors. So uh, that'll show up again uh, when when I get everything sealed. Uh, I decided I was going to light the uh, the uh, plasma emitter. Now there's one. Let me get it here. There's three. There's three. Uh, there's three uh, parts that'll lit up. One is the big, the big center one. And what I was gonna do, if I can find the box. All right, I am back. Plasma emitter. I drilled out. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but I drilled out for a one eighth acrylic rod. And I believe that is 1 16th, might be, I don't think it's a 32nd. But anyway, the idea is that that will go through there and I'll light it. And then this goes through. It does go through because I got it before. That's the wrong end, that's why. So this will go in and I'll cut it off and light it so that should give me a nice bright red light um, so like I said that that'll mount I get my fat fingers out of the way but that'll mount on the on the front hull like that and then I've got this kind of trenched out where I'll have my lights to, to light the big fiber up In addition to getting the portholes drilled out, I decided to put uh, the impulse engines like what you see on the uh, on the drawings. <coughs> so basically, you just use rectangular uh, square tubing, cut the length. I did uh, again. You'll see in the uh, the pictures I took, but you know, basically drew my line out, however tall where this is going to be, spaced them out, and then just drilled it out. Um, and inserted the uh, rectangular tubing. Now I'll clean this up here so that my red lights, and I'm going to probably put the, some flickering uh, red light just so that uh, you know it gives it some gives it some uh, detail. The other detail uh, <clears throat> I put on, but as I've been doing some body work, it's it's kind of erased off. But I decided I was just going to do a, a, a scribe of the landing gear according to like what you see on the uh, on the uh, the drawings there <clears throat> basically there's three three uh, foot pads one here one here and then one back here I can see the faint outline but I'll rescribe those and they'll be faint so that when the decal goes on they'll just it'll blend into the body uh, be nothing really pronounced um, basically that's about where I'm at right now Just wanted to make sure that uh, I got this scene taken care of before I, I start doing any kind of uh, lighting and painting and stuff like that. There's there's some imperfections, as you can see. I got my my circles 
marked where I need to go back and just do a little bit of touch-up stuff. Um, <clears throat> you know, trying to get this back nice tapered back into the body on both sides because this was pretty blunt, you know, there was uh, from the vacuum form. But uh, other than that, I mean, that's it's coming along. And then, uh, you know, here's my here's my partial globe of the Romulan homeworld. And like I said, uh, Jerry over at HD Model <coughs> HDA Model Works is working on the uh, a 12 by 12 placard kind of thing that'll fit over my base, leave space for this thing here. And like I said, it was when he showed it to me Saturday night. I was like, man, that's freaking really wicked looking man that it'll it'll really complement the model so I'm kind of uh, anxious to see that uh, let's see what else got one more piece the this is the top really haven't done much to this um, I just kind of reinforced it up underneath just to you know take some of that uh, flimsiness away so this this part here in addition to my my structure here should make this really sound as far as uh, when it goes together. So, you know, that's starting to look like a damn Romulan ship. The Prieta is creation. So, anyway, but I got this drilled out. I got a couple of boo boos here. I'm gonna, I gotta fill and then just re drill. For some reason, you know, in fact, like, if, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's like they had a double divot, and as I was going along, it's like I got off track. Um, very hard to see. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not even going to bother with the side sensor here. Uh, according to the drawing, and you know, e it's even hard to see on the uh, on the m photos from the uh, studio model. You know, of course, are really, really grainy. But <clears throat> I'm not going to try to drill those out. It would just, uh, you know, it, there's there's nothing to go by, and it'll be extremely uh, wavy. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, I think that'll be fine. Uh, what I'll probably do, in fact, I know what I'm going to do after I, after I get this thing all painted. I'm just going to take some micro crystal clear and just fill up the fill in the holes. I even thought about the solar res, but uh, I mean I have some of that solar res, but I don't know. Uh, have to play with it. So uh, for right now, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I'm just going to continue on. I'm going to make another pass over with the uh, the Evercoat, and if you haven't worked with this stuff, I like it. It's easy to work with. Um, you know, this is what uh, this is what I've been using. I forgot where the hell I bought this from, uh, automotive, but uh, I don't know what it was, like 25, 25 bucks or something like that. And between all the models that I've done, I've probably used maybe, you know, this much. Uh, it's used a little bit at a time. Essentially, I just use a, uh, you know, for big stuff, I use a spatula about this, but for the little stuff, <coughs> I just use, I just use this thing here. It gets into little spots, allows you to form it, and, uh, you know, as it's, as it dries and just before it hardens, it kind of, it gets like rubbery, so you can actually shape it or trim it with, uh, you know, I've been using just a flat blade and knocking off some of the high stuff and then just let it cure, so. Uh, however, I do recommend that you use one of these when you're sanding. You know, make sure you got one of these. You know, I think uh, 20 bucks over at Home Depot, something like that. Because this stuff, I've been knocking it down with some 120 sandpaper. I'll knock the heavy stuff off with the one sanding, uh, excuse me, with the 120. Then I'll go down to like uh, 240 and then, you know, uh, it goes smoother. But when you sand it, <coughs> you get dust and I'm talking dust like uh, baby powder so you don't want to be inhaling that crap otherwise you'd be really hacking up a lung so um, that's my safety tip for today <laughs> uh, so that's where I'm at hopefully the next next upgrade I will be uh, throwing some lights in it you know of course you're gonna do the light blocking uh, like I said I don't want to do any kind of painting and stuff like that until I'm I'm sure of I'm done working on inside, but uh, yeah. Hopefully next, hopefully next update, I'll have uh, more to show. I'm happy, really happy. 
with the wing pitch. If I can, of course I can't get in. I'm trying to look at this thing upside down, but that's a lot better than the uh, the angle that the uh, kit had. Like I said, the kit was almost laid over like an airplane. So, and then uh, you know these things here, boop, going like that. And then uh, then I got the tail piece here. I don't know if you caught that, but it'll look something like that. So it's getting there. It's getting close. Like I said, I'm really anxious to see the uh, the decal that, uh, well not the decal, the, uh, the the part for the base that Jerry's doing. Uh, these things here. Like I said, I took a bunch of pictures and I'm gonna I'll throw them in as I uh, as I do this uh, put this video together. But these I bought on Amazon. And don't ask me what the brand name is. But these things fit in a Dremel, and they are awesome. They're fragile, but they're awesome. And they allow me to, uh, as you'll see in the pictures, it allowed me to, when I was doing the ring, to actually go along and just pop holes in it and allow it to basically cut it out real quick and then throw the Dremel, throw the Dremel drum in here and just round it out, follow my pencil mark, and uh, it came out good. Came out quick, didn't take forever. In fact, the hardest part was cutting out the uh, cutting out the outer outer part of the ring, knocking out the inner side was like zip zip zip. So worked out pretty good. But these things, I think they were like uh, actually, I think I bought uh, there was like three sets. I think like for twenty five bucks. But they're different. Uh, you know, they call them different color codes. But it's just the different uh, different sizes. Like I I've been using the biggest one of all. But the little ones come in great when I did the little 1000 scale enterprise. It just popped right through. So, uh, other than that, I mean, that's just where we're at. So, thanks for watching.